What's going on warriors? It's coach J. So today we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about calories and macros for type one diabetics to help you to build muscle and burn body fat. So if you've ever wondered about calories and macros and how much you actually should be taking in for a type one diabetic, and if maybe it should be different to help you to get the results you're looking for, we're going to dive more into that today. Consider today like an intro into all of it. So you understand where you should start and if you should start in the first place, so we can peel these layers back for you to start getting some results when it comes to building muscle and burning body fat. Now, if it's your first time on the channel, guys, I'm a type one diabetic, natural bodybuilder. I've been a type one diabetic for over 26 years. And I share a lot of tips and strategies that type one diabetics can use to help them to build muscle, to burn body fat, and to manage their blood sugar levels overall. If you're not a diabetic, but you just, you just like supplement reviews and vlog style videos, I also do some of those. So make sure you guys smash the subscribe button down below, hit that bell notification, hit that like button so you guys don't miss out on any of these videos. Let's just dive right in. So first we're going to talk about calories and macros. What are they and why are they important for type one diabetics especially? And then we're going to get into what's called type one specific calories. So we'll talk about that, what that means for you as a type one diabetic and how you could potentially use this to your advantage to help yourself to build muscle and to burn body fat. We'll then talk about as well, tracking tools that you could use for yourself to help yourself to start tracking, to take things to the next level for yourself as well. When we think about calories and tracking food, Cal a calorie is just the energy we get from the food that we eat. And within our food, we have a certain amount of calories that we take in. Those calories also break down into macronutrients that we'll talk about. But when it comes to calories overall, your body also uses a certain amount of calories per day just to take care of basic bodily functions. And so when we think about calories, we first have to look at your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate. The basal metabolic rate is just measures the amount of calories or energy your body needs at rest. So just beating your heart, lungs, function, cellular energy, respiration, details like that. Whereas your RMR or your resting metabolic rate also includes other factors as well. So it can include maybe brushing your teeth or walking around light, very light activities that aren't necessarily intentional. So that's the difference between a BMR and an RMR. Then you also have what's called your maintenance calories. Your maintenance calories are essentially what someone would need to keep their weight stable. Now for type ones, it ends up being a little bit different at times, but rest, just for the sake of understanding calories, your maintenance calories are what your body needs to maintain your weight. Calorie deficit means that you need to be, is anything below your maintenance calories to help you to lose weight. And a calorie surplus is anything above maintenance calories, essentially would lead to you gaining weight. Now within that, you've got macronutrients. So under your calories, each calorie is made up of these macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. In protein, there's four calories for every one gram of protein, four calories for every one gram of carbohydrate, and nine calories for every one gram of fat. Here's why it's important for type one diabetics to understand how to manage calories and also macronutrients. So you have to think when we're, as type one diabetics, and we'll get into this more in this video, but our system is more dysregulated than a non-diabetic. We produce very low amounts to no insulin at all. And so we have to get that through an outside source that how it's administered is different than how the pancreas releases it naturally, which can have implications for the fat we gain, the muscle we build, and the muscle that we lose. And for us as type ones, one of the major things that we can go through as well as part of this dysregulated system is having more low blood sugars. So if you're a, someone that hasn't necessarily dialed that component in, and when it comes to low blood sugars, then you could easily be someone who is naturally going over your total daily calorie intake because it all adds up. The glucose tablet you had this morning adds up to calories. The orange juice, the candies that you had to pull yourself out of blood sugar lows all add up to your total calories. So again, if you are somebody that, and I say this all the time, as type ones, we have to put more of a magnifying glass to what we do. A non-diabetic doesn't have to worry about going, having a low blood sugar and wondering what does this mean for the rest of their calories in the day. They just track and eat and everything's good. But for us, we got to dive a little deeper. So you have to understand that you could potentially have a low blood sugar and buffer calories for that, especially if you don't have the blood sugars dialed in and you're having consistent lows throughout the days. Now, if you do want help with something like that, with managing the lows better, and you guys want to be on pace with what we do with our type one warriors in our system, 
Make sure you guys click the link below as well. I'll drop something down there. We can jump on a call and just find out the roadblocks that are happening with you in terms of why you're stuck and what we can do to get you out of that to move in the right direction, to avoid the lows and stay on pace with your goals. But what we want to focus on is making sure, again, that you buffer your calories to the side. So let's say you're somebody that's taking in 1,600 calories a day and that's your deficit then you might want to buffer 150 to 200 calories out of that. That's just going to go be the emergency calories that you could use if you needed to correct for a low. And each food that you're going to have is going to have a different amount of calories, a different amount of protein, carbs, and fats. So it's important to bring that into the bigger picture. And when it comes to protein, essentially somebody would want anywhere between about 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. And when it comes to carbohydrates and fats, Portioning these outright can also help you to get better control, especially as a type 1 diabetic, because the more fat that you have and carbohydrates you have, the harder time you might have managing your blood sugar levels because higher fats can lead to more insulin resistance and trouble managing your blood sugar levels. So keeping the fats relatively lower and keeping your carbohydrates at a moderate amount to help your body to use those carbohydrates when it comes to resistance training, building strength, muscle, it can be extremely effective to help to power your workout. Now you can find your calories by going to TDE calculators. These are total daily energy expenditure calculators online. You just put in your weight, your height, whether you're female or male, and it can help to calculate where your cal calorie should be. All this takes in, your total daily energy expenditure takes into account your RMR, your BMR, and calculates your maintenance calories as well off of the information that you put in. Essentially, your total daily, daily energy expenditure is of how much calories your body is expending. Generally speaking, this is just a guideline because there's other factors that are not necessarily taken into account when it comes to calories, and these are things that are also important to type 1 diabetics. This is why calories might be different for type 1 diabetics and something for you to be mindful of. A type 1 diabetic has different things that can happen hormonally that can impact how much fat is gained even if you keep the calories the same. How their insulin is administered is, administered is going to be different. And what we know about insulin, insulin can block the body's ability or reduce the body's ability from being able to burn body fat. So what we're finding is even in the studies, higher levels of insulin can relate to increased weight gain and fat gain even when calories are similar. This is important for us to look at how non-diabetics take in insulin versus how type 1 diabetics take in insulin. So in a non-diabetic, what you're going to have over here is your pancreas. And you're going to have a portal vein. What happens is, as you can see in this photo, the pancreas is releasing insulin into the portal vein. That portal vein then transfers the insulin to the liver. And so our liver is over here. The liver's job is to just detoxify components in the body to make them better for, for blood circulation. Now we see that insulin, 100% of it, is going to go to the liver. And then about 40% is going to make it to the peripheral tissues or muscle and fat. And in doing this, this system is very tightly regulated. So it means that the body's delivering just enough insulin. Now in a type 1 diabetic, what you're going to see is you're going to see 100% of insulin is gonna go straight towards muscle and fat. And then you're gonna get about 40% or less that ends up at the liver. By the time the muscle, the fat cells have absorbed the insulin that it's taking in, 40% or even less, Some up, it can even be 20 to 30% that's getting to the liver. As a result, you're seeing that there's less insulin going to the liver, which means that the suppression of other hormones like glucagon, and glucagon's job is to raise blood sugar levels, but in the presence of a non-diabetic who has 100% of insulin going directly to the liver, it can tell this glucagon to relax so that it's not, it doesn't have as much of an impact on the release of glucose into the blood, especially at meals, so it can keep the blood sugar level more stable. But because the insulin first in type 1s goes to the peripheral tissues of muscle and fat, by the time it makes it to the liver, the liver hasn't really received that signal from insulin as efficiently as a non-diabetic. So it's also leading to a cascade of other issues because now glucagon is like, okay, let me keep doing what I'm doing in raising blood sugar level. So now our type 1 diabetic has higher amounts of insulin. One of the reasons why type 1 diabetics at mealtime, not only are they dealing with the carbohydrates from their meals and sometimes protein fat, but mainly carbohydrates from their meals, but also they're dealing with the glucagon in the background, which sometimes gets increased at mealtime.
right? Which can also lead to further need to increase insulin to keep that blood sugar stable. Why this is important is because in the presence and what studies are showing us is as intensive insulin therapy can lead to more fat gain, right? So the more insulin someone is taking can lead to more fat gain. But we also just showed how your body taking in insulin differently might mean that the same calories is not a non-diabetic and you're taking the same thing if you were a twin and the only difference that we could account for was more insulin, you're likely to gain more body fat even at the same calories because of what's happening. With this being said, you might find that going a little bit lighter on the calories works out better for you, not because a calorie is different in you, but just because the hormones in your body are functioning differently because of how you're injecting and taking your insulin, because you might have higher spikes of glucose after meals because we're not suppressing glucagon as well as a non-diabetic would. And you're also dealing with lower levels of a hormone called amylin. Amylin also gets released from the beta cells of your pancreas just like insulin. And so if you have that issue of beta cells not working, amylin's not gonna work the way that it should either. And amylin's job is to make you feel full, to slow down the release of glucose into the bloodstream. So if amylin's not there, glucose is gonna speed its way into the bloodstream. Now you might need more insulin to take care of that. So we see how the dysregulation of insulin and in the presence of having the same calories as a non-diabetic could be a problem. So taking a look at that, if you're someone that goes to a TDE calculator, you might wanna subtract a couple hundred calories off of that, call that your maintenance and start there or use your RMR as your maintenance that you could start with and then go from there. The important thing to note is that again, your hormonal response is gonna be different. So the same calories in intensive insulin therapy, the intensive insulin therapy person taking more insulin is likely going to gain more body fat or be more predisposed to gaining that. Which brings us to another reason why it's important to track calories and macros. Because as a type one diabetic, you have such a dysregulated system that you could go three months and not be squared with what you're doing and all of a sudden you've gained 30 to 40 pounds in the form of body fat that you don't want and now you feel like you're at square one trying to figure out how to get rid of it because it makes it easier for you to gain that body fat just like it makes it easier for you to gain resistance in your tissues because you're taking 100 percent of it constantly in those peripheral tissues of muscle and fat so when something is amplified you're taking all this insulin what happens the cells and receptors start to say pull back a little bit saying, hmm, maybe we shouldn't respond as well as we were before because we're constantly being bombarded by more than we actually need. So now they become a little bit more resistant. Certain things that you guys could do to start to track your calories. One, you could start to use apps like Chronometer and MyFitnessPal. Remember to keep things simple. So when you keep things simple, you don't have to go over the top, right? Maybe it's chicken breast with broccoli for a bit and some rice. It is what it is. You're going to have to do what you're going to have to do to be able to make sure that you understand how much energy you're taking in your body. You need to be more on top of how much you're to put in your body than a non-diabetic. So now we consider this. Another thing to remember is on top of keeping things simple because it makes it easier to track, easier to manage blood sugar, make sure you're planning. So maybe there's a day in the week where you're making a lot of food and you're keeping some of it in the fridge. So you've already pre-tracked. You've put the information into your, your meal tracking app ahead of time to set your week up already. Now all you have to do is eat the food that you put in the app and move forward with it. A lot of these apps as well, you can make custom foods and custom recipes. Another thing you can do if you don't like to track, consider doing four days. Let's say you have four days where it's a little bit different on each of these four days, but you know that in these four days, you're hitting your calorie and at least your protein goal, which are the two most important ones to focus on. Then at least if you do that, then you can go and you can just repeat these days. Even if you didn't put these days in the calendar, because you've tracked them in the past, you know that you're hitting the calorie amount that you should be hitting without even tracking it. So that's another way that you can make your life easy by taking certain days and just replicating them even if you're not tracking those days, right? So that's a big picture of, of why it's important for us to track as type one diabetics because our hormonal response is slightly different. The things that we do are slightly different. So we need to be a little bit more ahead of the curveball than need of a non-diabetic non who is tracking so you know what's going in your body. Failure to do that can lead someone to say in six months they've gained weight and they're wondering where is it coming from? It could be the result of you being in a position where you are not tracking so you don't know what's in the food that you're eating, leading your body to gain more body fat, again, because of hormonal disturbances and not knowing how much calorie or energy you're putting in your body. Number two, what's, what's also important with that, just wrapping it up, is consider that you break down more muscle 
quickly or more quicker than non-diabetics due to certain hormones in our body and certain pathways in our body that increase how much muscle you break down it becomes important for you also to consider how much protein you're taking in in the presence of the overall calories as well this way you can fortify your body better so it's not constantly headed to breaking its muscle down but rather you're focused on fortifying it so you can repair and build more muscle in doing this this fits into a bigger picture because now you're ramping the metabolism up more with the protein you're taking in which can help your body to burn more body fat down the line and transform your body so you start to see more muscle two key things you can do to build more muscle is track your protein to make sure you're getting it in enough at least 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight and even 0.7 some people can get away with 0.6 but depends on how much of your total daily energy expenditure you're giving away with how hard you're working how many days in the gym are you working how many hours does that look like so getting in about 0.8 i say would be a good sweet spot or a starting point but don't think you have to scale things overnight if you're coming from eating 50 grams of protein then just slowly increase it to maybe 80 to 100 and then work your way up Remember, it doesn't have to be built overnight. Number two thing outside of getting protein in is mechanical stress. Lifting heavy weights is what resistance training is what's gonna help to trigger pathways designed to help you to build muscle. If you're coming from the position of already eating low calories and nothing is happening, you're gonna want to reverse your calories back out and really focus on muscle building. So I will do another video on that so we can tap in. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, hit that bell not notification down below. If you have any questions at all, please drop them down below in the comments. I'll make sure I get to them. Make sure you guys are set up and you're good to go. All right, I appreciate you warriors. I hope that helped you guys out. And if you guys feel like you guys need some help with putting all of these calories and macros together, honestly, sometimes it can be a lot and you feel like you need a little bit more support with that. Make sure you guys hit the link down below. I'll put it in and you guys can join our warrior team. We'll jump on a call. We'll try to iron things out to see where there's some roadblocks that are stopping you from getting it to your goal and seeing if the support and the structure that we offer here can help you get to your goal as well. But other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate you warriors. Ah, until next time.